of knowledge, how right is it to lack knowledge? How acceptable can that be? For God to reveal, and yet, so far as you're concerned, it's concealed. How, how can that be right? If God's opened something up, how right exactly is it for someone not to understand it to some degree, to some measurable degree? God is the God of knowledge. Now let's look at the, uh, the doctrine of learning. <coughs> As I've already mentioned, there are things not to be learned. Now, this is, uh, this is not only for the young, but this is certainly for the younger, like school-aged children and that, that can have some understanding. There's some things you don't want to learn. Now, let's, let's look at some of these. There are wrong things that are not to be learned. There are things that you've got no business becoming acquainted with. And if it's required, say you're, say you're in public school, and you're required to look, become acquainted with something that's not right. Here's what you say. No. It doesn't make any difference if the teacher says do it or the principal or the president of the United States says it. You say no. And just get set to go to prison if that's what it comes down, if that's what it comes down to. We're willing to do that. We're not going to become acquainted with stuff that's wrong. All right, that's what we want to look at. Deuteronomy 18.9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Don't learn it. And if you're around it, you'll learn it. Remember, learning has to do with being associated with something. So if you're around something long enough, you'll learn it. Don't, le don't learn the ways of the heathen. Here, Psalm 106, 35 says of Israel, but they were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. How wrong is it when church music sounds like world's music? How wrong, how wrong is it? Huh? I wish someone in this fair city had boldness enough to deal with the issue, but they don't. But I would really like someone to stand up and comment on what, how right is it for Christian music to sound like the world's music. Who's learned what? Who has? Don't learn the works of people that don't know God. That goes down to financial matters, business matters, entertainment matters, dress. Don't learn. Don't learn it. Why? Because then they, they, you got God against you. Here's another. So, uh, Proverbs 22, 40, 24, and 25. Proverbs 22, 24, and 25. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his way. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Lest thou learn his way and get a snare to thy soul. So if someone says it's just a reactionary, you know, they're marching, holding up placards and all this sort of thing all the time. Don't. Don't learn that. Let's go further. Jeremiah 10, 2. See, these are things not to learn. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed of them. That is, they look at the stars and they, they get all kind of conclusions they draw well a modern would be the ozone wow the ozone we're in trouble with the ozone they're dismayed at the heaven you got to see this they're dismayed at the heavens like man could disrupt the universe oh i know they make movies and documentaries and all this about it but they're dismayed at the heavens they can't account for how come the earth is warming up maybe it's because it's going to burn up did anybody think about that huh don't be dismissed learning the way of the heathen. And there's people that live in a dither and a turmoil all their life because of stuff like this. Because they're dismayed because nature looks like it's something's happened, something's going wrong. Better watch out, the mosquitoes are going to take over the nation and stuff like this. See, don't be dismayed. Let's learn in the way of the heathen. Now let's look at some more on this, uh, on this matter. Here's something to learn. <clears throat> 
It's found in Philippians 4.11. <clears throat> not that I speak in respect of want, that is, I'm not destitute. I have learned, I have, I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be content. Have you learned that? Or when the cash runs out, like, what do you do? Fall apart? What about when you have a lot? You squander it? Waste it? Have you learned whatever states you're in? It's temporary, whatever it is. If you don't have much, that's temporary. If you have a lot, that's temporary. See? I've learned. Now, learning is a process. You just so you don't, like suddenly learn everything. I've learned. I wanted to give... Um, Another on this matter about learning to maintain good works. You have to learn to maintain. Good works means valid means of employment. That's what he's talking about. Like if you're a Christian, you don't drive a beer truck. Huh? You don't work down at the casino. So I'm telling you the truth. You say, well, that's kind of narrow. Yes, it is kind of narrow. Yes, I admit it is narrow. But their way is narrow too. Go down there and try and get them to act. Say, look, I'd like to cash in on the chips even though I don't pull the lever. How about they say, what are you, some kind of nut or something? You can't do that. We got rules here. Well, God has rules too. And one of his is gainful employment. That's one of them. Honorable employment. Learn. Learn to maintain good works for necessary uses. The necessary uses are the necessities of life. You can work to accumulate or you can work to, to live. You've got to kind of decide which one it's going to be. But uh, it's a terrible thing to work to have a bunch of stuff. It's like a form of enslavement. Learn to maintain good works for necessary, for essential, essential things. And if you get more, that's just, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have the right motives when you work, God sometimes will give you a little extra, you know. I can remember when in those days when uh, didn't have very much, <laughs> And we were glad when someone noticed that the kids needed a new, new set of shoes. I said, hey. But I don't know that that would have happened if I hadn't learned to maintain proper employment and this sort of thing. I don't think things like that would have happened. But if you are good and honest and work unto the Lord and this sort of thing, he'll meet, meet your needs. That's something you learn. Learn to maintain good works for necessary uses. And how about this? <laughs> In other words, you don't want your job to, to distract you. Your, your means of employment can actually turn you away from God so you get too busy in other things. You don't want that to happen. You want to have a kind of trade that Jesus could borrow your boat. <laughs> Look at it that way. That he could, he, could, he, could, he could cause your whatever trade you had, like a fishing trade, you could have a, a bumper, bumper, bumper catch that day when Jesus was with you. Well, some people, he couldn't do that. They don't have that kind of employment, see. Learn to do that. Here's another, another thing. The scripture teaches us that you can learn from the Father. He can show you things nobody else can show you. Here's what Jesus said about it. John 6, 45. Learning, remember, acquainted with, familiar with, associated with, acquiring understanding, able to use it. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught of or by God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and learned of the Father, learned from from is the idea of meaning and origin is learned of the father from the father comes to me All right i got to learn to think backward now did you come to